All right, we are now loading up this game between Mono and Dignitas. And briefly, let's take a look at the lanes while this lane, the game loads up. We have Kogma and Janna on Zig and Pixel in that bot lane. They're going to be against Cutie Pie's Ash and Locust Soraka. Now, Ash is not one of the most played champions by Cutie Pie, so I'm going to be interested to see how he does here. Janna and Kogma, a very safe lane combo, looking for that shield and disengage, trying to move Kogma into that late game, and now we are in and rolling. So here we see Nintendo X playing Jungle Olaf, a little bit of a psych out there probably in champ select, uh, although we did not get to see the champ select for this game. Olaf and Lee Sin, both champions that could jungle or top lanes, so that versatility allowing them to counterpick a little bit better. And they're going to move immediately into the jungle, heading over to blue, and they are going to be moving in, trying to protect this blue and getting some good view on the river. No, wait, it looks like they're setting up for a possible invade. Janna's going to go ahead and wait. Maybe she's going to ward right here near the entrance to red buff. Now, we can see that Mundo on the other team might be going for an early red buff and a resident strike and Sonic Wave going down on Descara. It's going to ping him for a little bit of damage, let him know that Lee Sin is there, and probably alert them to the fact that they will be going for this red buff. Another Sonic Wave going into that bush just to clear it out. And we have them setting up for a pretty safe red steel. Now that ward down there is going to tell them if Mundo and the rest of his team, if Dignitas is going to go in and counter steal the other red buff. So great play there by Pixel. Did get him a little bit late if there had been an early engage. Could have been a bit dangerous. But then again, Mono does have some great CC. And uh, with that Morgana Dark Binding the, the, uh, and the Axe from Olaf. So they could have disengaged relatively easily, and they do have a very strong comp, stronger at least than Dignitas, for this level 1 team fight. And so here we see that they're going to be setting up, looks like, the take race. Pixel is going to be going back along with Zig down to that bot lane, and here we go. They're going to take some of these wraiths, no problem, and a move in to this next phase of the game. So, and let's see if they take this red buff without any trouble. And it doesn't look like Mundo is going to be coming in at this point. The tar will go down and they will get a very safe lizard buff here as they move in. Scar is in mid lane, so they have really nothing to worry about. And it looks like Nintendo X is Let's see. Yes, he is going to clear the last lizard, so he has a timer on that red. And Lee Sin, Zion Spartan are going to be heading up to top lane. In the meantime, Nintendo on Jungle Olaf looks to be heading down. And look, they see, they see Mundo here throw that cleaver and leash that red. So are they going to actually move in and do anything about it? And yes, Zig and Pixel are going to move up next to that red buff. And they see Mundo. They get some sight. He's relatively low, and he does manage to smite it. But is he going to get away? No. Morgana comes in, has not cast that Dark Binding yet, and they are just going to converge. Scar is coming in behind, but Dominate isn't going to be able to get away. Now Undertow hits him, and he is going to go down to Kogma with Flash, and unfortunately picking up Pixel picking up those double buffs instead of Kogma or Olaf. So a little bit of a misplay there. Unfortunately, Zig couldn't get that, but they are going to take up a very nice first blood. What a ward by Pixel in order to really get into that and turn it around a little bit. So now Nintendo X going to take out the rest of this lizard camp. He has the timer on his own camp now as well, and they are staggered enough that it's possible for him to be in both places as Nintendo just going to quickly clear out his race and continue this game. Some damage going on here from Lee Sin onto Vlad in top lane. Lee Sin picking up boots, three pots for us, so very safe. Meanwhile, Vla Vlad intelligently going with the cloth armor, th five pots, in order to stay alive through his weak early game and live long enough to move into where his transfuse lowers cooldown. He can get up there against Lee Sin a little bit better. Lee Sin running some magic resistant runes and masteries there to take a little less damage from Vlad, and boy boy getting pushed a little bit into a turret, and it looks like he is going to miss some CS because of that. In the meantime, Morgana is now going to go ahead and blue pill, and bot lane we see a little bit of chasing here with Pixel with a double buff doing a, a bit of harassment on that Ash, getting a bit of a few free hits while Zig farms up, and they have to head back as that poke is a little bit too much for them. So Olaf here now, looks like he is going to be running some attack damage runes and masteries. Let's check his... Yeah, indeed, he doesn't have much armor pen right at the moment, so... 
He's just going to be moving on with the flat attack damage. He's coming down here for a gank on Boy Boy's Vladimir in top lane, and that pool going to get him out easily, and he was going to unfortunately miss that second undertow. So he's not going to be able to pick up a kill, but does get some free damage, but Boy Boy should have no trouble healing back up with all those potions that he got early game. In the meantime, Paradoxical doing a little bit of trading here in this mid lane, and if we look at the CS right now, Scar at 23 CS compared to Morgana's 21, and surprising to see that Scar is out farming Morgana. That's not something normally you see, especially with how hard she's been putting it, pushing into the turret. And now Paradoxical and Morgana's going to come up and try for a gank in this top lane as Olaf's still sitting in the brush. And are they going to get this or not? And that Dark Binding is going to get pulled out, unfortunately. Bit of a risky gank there to waste CS and your time and, and spend all that time getting up to top lane to try that gank against a Vlad that does have pool. So interesting decision there. Could have paid out big. That top lane does snowball really hard if you can get that kill. So I suppose, relatively speaking, if they have gotten it, it was a pretty uh, high reward, low risk scenario. Morgana should have no problem farming up this mid lane again. And in the meantime, Zig looks like he's very comfortably farming close to his turret, very safe. Paradox looks like go ahead and ward that tribe rush before going back, giving his teammate a little bit of an edge in terms of avoiding these ganks. Meantime, Olaf, Nintendo Dex, continues through the jungle, picks up blue buff, and does not end up giving it to Morgana and he will just continue to move through the forest, leveling that undertow and reckless swing in equal measure so that he can do as much damage and also do some damage on ganks as well. Zig is going to kite a little bit down in bot lane in order to get that CS. Zion Spartan has gone back, and you'll notice he has picked up two Null Magic Mantles. Now, of course, that's going to help him stay very competitive in this lane against Vladimir. He's got some real problems without having a bit of extra magic resistance now. And wow, what a kill there! The Reckless Swing taking down Soraka, and Olaf will easily run out. Pixel didn't even need to be there for that one. Great gank, a little bit of a miss warding looks like on Dignitas's part in that bot lane. Meantime, the battle between Morgana and Ryze rages still in mid. Ryze still on equal CS footing with Morgana, and that's a little bit scary. This Ryze, if he can manage to keep up at CS, is going to be a little bit stronger in that late game. And it is very hard to farm early with Ryze as Mundo makes a short appearance here before heading back into his jungle. And Nintendude X now, he's going to be moving up as well. We'll see if he manages to do anything in this mid lane. Paradoxical hiding in that bush as well. They must know that Paradoxical isn't there, and look at that Dark Binding going down, and that Reckless Swing taking down Mundo immediately. He didn't have a chance there. Unfortunately, he was caught out a little bit in his own jungle, as I don't think Skara knew what had happened, as Paradoxical, as Morgana had pushed that lane just a bit too far. And so he couldn't keep track of him when he left. In the meantime, they're going to get a pretty free dragon here without Mundo to contest. There's pretty much no way they're going to be able to steal this at this early level uh, without that smite from Mundo being able to really secure the dragon. And Nintendo Dex has to be a little bit careful because this Rise is at full health. and They don't have wonderful ward coverage if he does come through the river, but Zig will show up on the Kog'Maw and help him take it out. And Nintendo Dex will hit level 6 over that. Looks like he's going to be going for a Riggle's Lantern early. Uh, very strong item in the jungle. We'll see if that is indeed what his plan is. Meanwhile, Zion Spartan continues to harass Boy Boy constantly in top lane, and it's a little bit difficult because we can't see the health bars in this replay, but I imagine he's doing quite well, and Boy Boy's forced to ult, and Zion Spartan looks like he's going to get very low, but he's going to safeguard almost the entirety of Boy Boy's ult. Wow, that magic resist really doing work. Let's check him out. He's got over 100 magic resist at the 8 minute mark. That is phenomenal. And with his natural life steal from Lee Sin, he's going to be able to heal up quite rapidly off of these minions. And I don't think there's much that Boy Boy is going to be able to do against this. In the meantime, looks like Nintendo X will be picking up that Riggle's Lantern and heading straight back into his jungle to continue farming. Mono has a pretty commanding advantage at, at this point. Having taken down the enemy jungler two times already, Dominate having gone down twice, meaning that his counter jungle is going to be extremely weak, because in the off chance he runs into this Olaf, he's going to have a lot of problems, and likely this Olaf will be able to solo him quite effectively. And a ward now going down for Dominate, so he's going to try and steal these wraiths, but Nintendo Dex is onto it, and he throws an axe in, and looks like Mundo will pick up that last wraith with a cleaver. Wow, what a play there by Dominate to 
ensure that he gets that little bit of extra gold and experience. Those little advantages can add up to a lot later. Meanwhile, the back and forth in mid lane continues between Paradoxical and uh, Skara, so not really any excitement in mid lane so far, but they are going to go ahead and give Paradoxical this blue buff while frantically pinging red. It looks like it has come up recently, and they should know the timer on that pretty well. And yes, Mundo has picked it up. It did come up about a minute ago, looks like, a minute or two ago. And uh, Mundo will be able to pick that up. They do see V and see him getting it. So they, Lee Sin is aware, Zion Spartan is aware in top lane that a gank is a possibility. And Nintendo X is going to try and go ahead and gank him in the tribe rush if there's not a ward there for Dignitas. Meanwhile, Paradoxical looks like he's going to move up to top lane again. Nope, he's going to back off. And they're going to go ahead and just dive. Dominate. He is very weak at this point. He has a level up, but it doesn't look like they're going to have any problem. And the Ignite goes down, and they are going to kick him into the wall. And a arrow comes down the lane and smacks Zion Spartan in the face, but isn't going to be enough. And that safeguard will keep Olaf alive. Would have lived without it, but just a little extra love, just in case. And Olaf will be safe, as will Zion Spartan. Great dive there, great kill. While Boy Boy's Vladimir was back at base, he has now picked up a Hextech revolver. As to be expected for that extra sustain. And the cloth armor, again, he's just holding on to that to prevent that damage from Lee Sin. And now Zion Spartan's going to go back and pick up an extra couple, looks like Dorn's Blades here, so that he can hang in there, do the lifesteal, and get a little extra HP and damage and harass Vlad all the more, as Vlad has gone up to 77 armor at this stage of the game, so he is going to need a little extra damage to do some uh, real hurt, lay some real hurt down on Vlad. Meanwhile, Kogma doing a little bit of work, keeping this lane very, very pushed in this bot scenario. And Zig going to lay down some ults at the turret. Cutie Pie getting topped off by Locust while Nintendo X continues his jungle path, going to pick up Red once more. He has now picked up a Ruby Crystal, wondering if that's going to be turned into an Aegis of the Legion, or maybe he's going to go Hotshot style and get a Kindle Gem for that cooldown reduction on Olaf that does allow more spamming of skills like uh, Reckless Swing. A little engagement here as Zion Spartan heads way beyond his creep line in order to harass Vlad a little bit before heading back to CS. In the top lane, we can see Vlad is 77 CS to Lee Sin 67, so he is up a little bit. That is about maybe a little more than half a kill. Uh, close, perhaps a little bit closer. 12 to 16 is typically a kill, so he is going to be up a little bit of gold. But Lee Sin, of course, does have that assist. So all, it's all pretty even, all things considered. Scar running around. They are going to see him pick him up with the CV in the bushes in River as Paradoxical heads back and takes Wraiths so that he doesn't have to push his lane. That blue buff makes it no problem at all. They're going to see Dominate now with that ward heading down looking for that blue buff and maybe getting Wolves. But unfortunately, Nintendo Dex is going to be waiting in the bushes in this bot lane trying for a lane gank with that red buff. And this pink ward's going to ensure they don't see him, but a hawk shot will make it so that Dignitas discovers his place in the bushes, unfortunately, for Mono. And he's just going to have to run away back through Tribush Brush and go back into his own jungle. In the meantime, Dominate sprinting out of Mono's jungle with his ult on. And Skara continuing to be really an immovable object here in mid lane. He's been kind of pinned by this Morgana AoE at his turret. And if he wants to keep farming, he has to stay there. And Morgana's going to clear that lane again and now go up for another gank on Vladimir. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. This is the second time that Morgana has headed up to top lane to do some ganking. And I'm just not sure how effective it's going to be. You know, ganking a Vlad a turret, and he's going to go ahead and miss that Dark Binding. Vlad was smart enough to leave that turret, get behind it, get out of the range of Dark Binding. There's probably a ward in Tribrush as well, which helped, and Skara probably alerted his teammate to the fact that she had left lane, because he knows now that when this Morgana pushes that wave, pretty much every time Paradoxical is leaving and trying to either get into the enemy jungle or go ahead and gank top. And unfortunately, neither for of those ganks top have been successful so far. But it is keeping Vlad a little bit wary, as they're going to go ahead and go for this blue buff. And Paradoxical weaving around the edge of the blue nook there. And a Dark Binding going to go ahead and steal that blue buff. What a play by Paradoxical to just grab that from under Ryze's nose. Skara cannot be happy about that. And looks like, are we going to see another dragon? Dragon is up as both teams are poking their noses around it. 
and Nintendo X going to go ahead and tentatively check this brush while Zig and Pixel come up. Looks like they are going to go for it. All five of them. Vlad has moved down to middle lane and also Zion Spartan's Lee Sin has come in to help but I just don't think they have the positioning, Dignitas that is, in order to pick this up and no, they will get a relatively uncontested dragon. Looks like Ash is taking some damage for that Q and Resonating Strike, and looks like the Dark Binding will go ahead and clean her up. So another kill for Mono at this stage, and they are up 5-0, which is a pretty substantial lead when you're facing a team of Dignitas's caliber, and especially at this level of play, that's a pretty big hole to dig yourself, especially considering that Mundo looks like he is now down 0-3, and a dive going on here in top lane as Dominate is getting mercilessly chased down by Olaf, Janna, and Kogma. There's not really a lot he can do as they are going to go ahead and safely farm these mid creeps. They know Rise is in mid lane, and so now that they have lost sight and Morgana looks like they're going to be rewarding right by the race here to see if there's any more counter jungling or ganks coming from Mundo. Very smart play. They're going to do some damage on bot turret here with the three of them still secure in this lane. And Lee Sin, in the meantime, still going to just continue farming in top lane. And Lee looks like he's at 97 to Boy Boy's 109 on Vlad. But again, those two assists going to be very, very helpful uh, in the late game and also to catch up with that creep score. You know, a little extra experience and uh, the gold, too, from the Dragons is going to put him up a little bit in the lead. Nintendo Dex doing just a wonderful job of ganking other lanes this game, ensuring that his team gets kills. Real nice work. And uh, this bot lane as well, keeping themselves alive. And of course, Kogma is going to be much scarier late game. Has less utility than Ash with that arrow, but will be very terrifying in that late game. And it looks like Nintendo X might have ac he picked up that blue buff maybe accidentally on a proc from Riggles. That can happen sometimes, but Morgana did already have a blue buff, so it is hard to tell what the communication was right there. And since I can't see how close she is to running out of that blue buff, it does make it a little bit challenging. Dominate trying to hold this mid lane, but he should be worried that this Morgana and this Olaf can just dive him, and he's going to back way off to avoid getting dark bound or hit by that Morgana ult. And looks like he's going to hit it anyway, but it doesn't matter because Scar runs back up. In the meantime, the push continues in bot lane. It looks like they're just trying to do damage to this turret and take it down at this point. They're going to end the laning phase of this game as fast as possible. And yes, Zig laying down that uh, Void Ooze just so he can kite a tad bit better on these creeps and keep the lane pushed to get that last little bit of damage there on that top turret. Now, looks like a dive going down as Olaf ults to avoid the Rune Prison. He's going to be chasing that Rise. And are they going to get it? Lee Sin dives in very deep, kicks him to the side, and uses this Ignite. And will Scar go down? Scar will go down. But it looks like Zion Spartan's going to go ahead and get cleaned up by Dominate. And Paradoxical in a really bad position now with Locust coming in as well. And that Silence going to make sure that Paradoxical goes down. So a bit of a miss up there. Diving two turrets deep to secure a kill on Scara, but getting killed twice in return, leaving the score at 6-2. So a, a little bit of a misstep there, but at least the kills went down both to Mundo, who is already a bit gimped, so it couldn't, it's not hurting as bad as it could be. You know, if we had the AD carry or Skara or Voivoi Boy Boy picking up those kills instead, it probably would have been more meaningful because they already had perhaps a little bit of an edge, at least Voivoi Boy did in his lane. But Dignitas this game looking quite immobile, honestly. Um, Mono really doing a wonderful job of roaming all over the map to ensure these kills and playing very aggressively when there is another player in their lane, but very passively when there's not. For example, in this bot lane, when the Olaf came down earlier, you saw a very aggressive play, but otherwise Zig has really just played back with the exception of that brief push to take out that tower and kind of end the laning phase of the game. So in the meantime, Scar are really not roaming much, which is surprising because Ryze can have some very powerful ganks with that rune prison and his single target damage, and he really hasn't been moved at all to any of the other lanes. I think perhaps they're a little bit worried about how far behind I Will Dominate is and need to be able to react to them going into his jungle, uh, but it does seem, and also Lee Sin top lane, like Vlad, notoriously difficult to gank, And but this bot lane, you'd think that they might have been able to do a little bit of something down there with Skara, but he... Every time Morgana leaves, he's just content farming this turret instead, maybe hoping that these kills will be made up for, or the failed ganks top from Morgana will be made up for 
by having a superior farm score, or at least an even farm score. He's only a little bit down right now into the late game. And now they're going to go ahead and add insult to injury by taking the blue buff from Dignitas. In the meantime, we see now the four-man Rome squad from Mono going down. Looks like they're going to go ahead and group up and perhaps just push down this mid-tower while they have an advantage. Lee Sin doesn't appear to be having too much trouble holding this lane against Boy Boy. And this Kog'Ma, with his range and the Janna shield, should be able to take down this tower easy peasy, and it will explode in a shower of sparks, and they will be able to get out very safely from this situation while getting a little extra gold for their team. Again, their commanding lead increasing further. A couple dragons, a couple towers, and 6-2 to two in kills. It does seem a bit grim right now, but there's an arrow, and it's going to be blocked by Black Shield, and they're going to go in, but that Black Shield tanking up a lot of the damage from Ash and Rise, and now the Rise has been Ignit, and now the Kog'Ma ult's going down, doing a little bit of extra damage, and Dignity is going to have to back off into Dark Binding, very barely missing. While well, they're setting up again for Dragon Paradoxical, quite low on this Morgana, but does have that blue buff, so should be able to spam spells and perhaps keep her alive with a bit of spell vamp from her passive. And looks like they're going to take a cleaver to the face there. Morgana lucky that nobody else was around to follow that up. Because uh, she was slowed before she could get, get, get that black shield up. Zig now laying down an extra bit of damage and pushing that rise back with a bit of poke from his ultimate. And now we have uh, some damage going down on this dragon and a very delicate, delicate, delicate dance going as Dominate throwing some cleavers, trying to get some damage on this Kog'Ma, but he's going to be black shielded and no problem. And they're going to take that dragon. I believe that there wasn't a steal there from... There might have been a steal there, actually, from Mundo. Difficult to tell without the global gold counters and seeing a little bit of gold could pop up in their head. But since we didn't see that gold, I actually think that Mundo might have picked that up. So really well played there by Dominate if that indeed happens. Zion Spartan's going to go ahead and babysit mid lane while the rest of his team goes back and go ahead and take the CS and experience that results. Lee Sin now getting very beefy, getting that Hex Drinker. He had those early two Null Magic Mantles, and typically those are built into Hex Drinker and Merc Treads if you get them early, and indeed that's what we're going to be seeing here. Uh, late game, Hex Drinker will probably be built into Mod Malmordius, though we'll have to see what else Lee Sin's goes, whether he goes War Mogs, War Frozen Mallet, and picks up that Atmas as a supplement, or what his long-term game plan is. Though with Mod Malmordius, he may not feel it's necessary to get the Atmas in order to continue doing damage, especially since there are two AP champions on Dignitas. He might just opt for some other items instead. Meanwhile, Pixel has picked up an Oracle and is now going around sweeping for wards, so he is going to find those wards quite easily and be able to take them out, limiting Dignitas' vision. In the meantime, it doesn't look like Dignitas has picked up an Oracle yet, as some damage going down between Voiboy and Zion Spartan in this top lane, a little bit of back and forth dance, as both of this top lane, really, no one has been able to get a dis definitive advantage especially considering how defensively both of these champions have been building. Again, 122 MR, Vlad has 98 armor, and he's going to get caught there, and he uses his fool after being Dark Bound, so he's not going to be able to move, and the Morgana ult goes down, and he's going to stun him as the Janna Slow comes in as well, and Zion Spartan's going to flash in and throw that Sonic Wave down, but now we see Ryze coming in at a great kick, going to launch Skara back through his own troops and knock them up, and I don't think they're going to be able to get a kill from this, especially with that Dark Binding. Lee Sin's going to be able to escape, and now Nintendo X coming in with the ult, and he is going to just focus immediately onto Soraka, throwing an axe through all of them. That Undertow going to do some work, but that exhaust is not really going to help you against an ulting Olaf, and Dominate's going to go down again. Black Shield now on Zion Spartan, as he's going to be able to catch up, and he's going to sh Resonating Strike through the wall, but he is going to be unfortunately left alone and picked off by Skara and Ash. So a bit of a pity there, an overextension a bit by Zion Spartan, but he, his team really is going to pay too much of a price as they still go up in terms of kills 10 to 3, and it looks like they might be moving for Baron, and Skara walking straight into an undertow and dark binding. Wow. I guess he thought that they had already started Baron, but maybe he wasn't exactly paying attention. They did great reaction time by Mono. Fortunately, Skara just taking a bit too much damage to that low life. I don't know what he thought he could do against four of them with Baron in the first place. I think that's a little bit of a misplay, but perhaps he was hoping to just pick up some of these low kills with low HP champions with his ult, considering he knew from the, the last fight how 
low they were, but they are going to go ahead and pick up Baron. Everyone should be blue pilling. Looks like Paradoxical might be taking out this mid lane creeps first. Hard to see her HP right now. Paradoxical has picked up a Rabadon's Death Cap first, completely foregoing any kind of Rod of Ages build that you might typically see on Morgana, going full AP offense, obviously feeling very confident about his team's place in this game and deciding that really he wants to do more damage. And with the tankiness of this Olaf, now picking up a Heart of Gold, Cloth Armor, Null Magic Metal, and Giant's Belt. So having some pretty serious HP and resists. In addition to this Lee Sin, who is building Phage, probably into Frozen Mallet. Um, I think that perhaps Morgana is figuring that these two bruisers are going to be do enough tanking, as well as the fact that Janna is, of course, a wonderful disengaged champion. Now, you have to be careful, especially with this Morgana and this Janna. We haven't seen it yet, but... Um, that John, of course, can monsoon people out of Morgana's soul shackles, So, but uh, conversely, can flash in and monsoon people into Morgana's soul shackles. So it's all about how you play it. It can go a little bit wrong if you don't have very crisp uh, team communication, but with the ganks that Mono has been pulling this game, you have to be pretty confident that their team communication is top-notch. So they're going to go ahead and siege this mid turret while they have the opportunity with Baron buff and with this Kog'Maw. Lee Sin going around the other side and getting a little bit of damage before safeguarding to that ward. Not sure what he was planning on doing there, if he was going to try and kick somebody out to his allies where a Dark Binding or Undertow death awaited them. But this siege will continue for a little bit. This tower getting picked down slowly, slowly, slowly. But surely, nonetheless, Volley going down is not going to be able to stop him as this Dark Binding or, uh, excuse me, the Black Shield will go ahead and take that tower out of the game. In the meantime, some more poke going down from Mono onto Dignitas with that Void Ooze, those artilleries, and now they're going to go and sweep through the jungle, taking those buffs, and should have no problem. Well, it looks like they're not going to take the buff, or they've already taken the buff, and there is only one of the small creeps left there to prevent Dignitas from taking any more. Meantime, we are going to see some damage now going down on bottom turret, and they're going to have no problem taking that out. That leads the turret to five to none. That is an immense amount of damage, or immense amount of gold, excuse me, for every single member of Mono. That's going to be, you know, what, 150 times five gold. So nearly 1,000 gold, 750 gold right there that each of the members of Mono is going to be up on their laning opponents. So looking like a pretty deadly push here now as Zion Spartan looks like he's going a little bit too far in, but they are going to be able to take down this tower. And a Vladl is hitting all five members of Mono. Monsoon goes off immediately to blow him off and keep him alive. And Zion Spartan taking a lot of damage with that safeguard and Black Shield. Looks like it's going to be keeping him alive in addition to a Shirelia's Reverie heading out. And what a disengage there from a bad situation nearly for Mono. Dignitas caught them all very well. A brilliant ultimate by Voivoy's Vladimir to hit all five members, of course, amplifying that damage dealt onto them, and a killing spree going down from a wonderful Dark Binding, looks like, over the wall there, onto Ash, taking her out. Brilliant play here by Paradoxical on this Morgana this game. Great bindings all the time, landing all of those skill shots, and the damage coming off of her, considering she has that early Rabadons, is phenomenal. And now an inhibitor down at 26 minutes. Now six towers. Dictatus hasn't even been able to kill the tower yet. Really impressive, dominant game that we're seeing here from Mono. It'll take a lot, I think, for them to throw this one or to lose it. And Dignitas really, I don't think, has very many answers for this late-game Kog'Maw. They're going to find it very difficult to get back there with their current champion lineup. Uh, Dr. Mundo is just going to get rooted and slowed, and even with his speed from his ultimate, going to have a very difficult time getting back. Uh, Kog'Maw shouldn't be in a position where he's going to be able to be rooted by Rise. Um, and Vlad, I'd be really surprised if Voivoy has managed to, managed to get in the back and do enough damage to burst this Kog'Maw down. Kog'Maw now picking up a Phantom Dancer to go with his earlier Infinity Edge. So, uh, really terrifying right now. Those three Dorn's Blades going to give him a ton of health steal in addition to the Vampirism Masteries, which I assume he is going to be running. And now we're just going to see a quick sweep through the jungle to pick up that blue on Morgana, followed by some more good old-fashioned tower pushing. I would imagine Abyssal Scepter now being picked up by Morgana. Interesting choice, considering they don't have a ton of AP on this team, but again, the AP on the opposing team of Dignitas from coming out of Vlad and Rise will give her a bit more survivability and a bit more damage, even if it's not an entirely optimal 
uh, item for their own team comp. It's still a great choice on Morgana, given the enemy's prediction for AP damage themselves. So, Zion Spartan is going to go ahead and clear out this wave top. Looks like they're going to easily take down this tower in top lane, throwing a couple wards down. Pixel again having that Oracle and sweeping very nicely. And here we go. This top tower doesn't look like it's going to be long for this world. And no, it will go down immediately as Dignitas just plays safely by their inhibitor turret while the bot lane, which is inhibitor list, continues to push with those super minions. So there is a kind of a clock here that Domin Dignitas is not going to be able to stay there indefinitely. Both teams having relatively decent poke uh, with the Ash and the Cleavers and the Transfusions, but that Undertow hitting Ash all the way in the back of a Dark Binding landing on her, and will she go down? A resonating, or Sonic Wave, excuse me, taking down that Ash, and a Monsoon going down now as soon as Vlad pops that ult again, giving him a little extra heal and disengaging that fight so they can't use the additional damage from that ultimate, and they're just going to go ahead and chase off Dignitas, and they have to do something now before this inhibitor, or this Nexus turret is going to go down. Meanwhile, the siege continues here. None of Mono have died. They're going to go ahead and place a ward tauntingly so Lee Sin can go in. Wow, what a play there. They place the ward so that Lee Sin can safeguard it and try and get that Sonic Wave Resonating Strike down onto Scar, and a Dark Binding going to launch him down now, and now he's going to get hit by Soul Shackles, and that stun goes off immediately, killing him not just CCing him, and they're going to have no issues taking down this inhibitor at this stage of the game. No, they're just going to back off. They want to keep their lead and hold on to it. This full HP Vlad, a little bit intimidating, and an arrow coming down now, and Kog'Maw barely sidestepping the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Wonderful presence of mind there from Mono in order to dodge that ultimate from Ash. Great job by Void Boy pushing back, saving that inhibitor. Probably the only thing that's keeping them in this game right now is they're going to have to go back and clear out. They did lose one of their Nexus turrets, however. And now, interestingly, picking up a Quicksilver Sash on Olaf. That's not an item you see on him very frequently, considering his ult is already a CC breaker. Uh, that magic resist, that extra magic resist making a lot of sense against the double AP build of Dignitas, but Maybe a little odd that he would pick this up. I guess he's extremely worried about those Enchanted Crystal Arrows and Rune Prisons, which are really the, maybe the Soraka Silence too, which are really the only thing that's going to be affecting him um, in a way where he couldn't just get re-slowed by, let's say, the Vlad Pool or more Mundo Cleavers or Volleys or Frost Shots or anything like that. So probably just building it principally for the uh, Magic Resist. And honestly, he is... Let's check his stats right now. You know, he's 3-0 and 8. He's probably not going to die anytime soon. Or, you know, he's going to be doing enough damage as it is. So just that little bit of extra safety should help him out a tiny bit. And if he gets exhausted as well, trying to get the back lanes, that should do some work also. They're going to go ahead and take another Baron now. Leeson having picked up Frozen Mallet and a Chain Vest. So both he and Olaf extremely tanky. Paradoxical picking up another Blasting Wand, hitting up to 536 AP while Pixel remains with the Oracle, not having died this game at all. So very dominant play by Kog'Maw, Zig, Pixel, and Nintendo X, not even dying against Dignitas, a feat in and of itself. And they're going to go straight for this inhibitor, this naked inhib. Uh, and they should have no problem getting it and picking up the rest of the inhibs as well. Dignitas really has to engage here. There's not a lot of choice, even though Mono has Baron, so we're going to see some sort of final engagement here shortly as they kind of test the waters, trying to get some free damage. But now it looks like they're going to go ahead and get a Rune Prison down Zion Spartan, but he's going to flash out, and now the Vlad ult going down, but again, that Monsoon going down immediately after the Vlad ult. Enchanted hit Crystal Arrow hitting Zig, but it's not going to matter. Zig is going to heal up very quickly with that Vampiric Scepter and that, uh, that uh, Infinity Edge, excuse me. Dominic coming in now with his ult on, but the burst damage is too much, and now Locus going down as well. There's not much hope, looks like. Will Zig go down? They do manage to kill Zig, but the investment was too great. Scar is going to die, and will Zion Spartan get hit by the turret? No, he's going to safeguard out, and three of Mono managing to stay alive there. <laughs> really great last-ditch effort by Dignitas. Managed to take out two of them, do diving deep for that Kog'Maw, thinking that if they could take him out, maybe they could survive the rest of them, but it was not to be.